soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king soon and very soon we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king no more crying now we are going to see the king no more crying then we are going to see the king no more crying then we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king no more dying now we are going to see the king no more dying now we are going to see the king no more dying now we are going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king The Lord works in mysterious ways. The three of us were born and raised by the same parents, but we couldn't be more different. Prior to three days ago, we hadn't been in the same room since mom passed. Before that, my wedding, 10 years ago. Although brothers, we have completely different perspectives on our upbringing, life, love, and family. We came up here to say goodbye. As it turns out, my brothers met a man they never knew, and I only knew for a short while. But after this weekend, all of our lives will never be the same because of him. The Lord works in mysterious ways indeed. the timing of these things is never good. We're just gonna have to go for it. Well, the old man sure went for it plenty of times after he was baptized, but nothing. I went for it after the funeral, but just not receptive to anything. What about Rob? I just hope Rob makes it up there. I tried to pin him down, offered to pick him up, drive him up there, but no, he wouldn't go for it. You really think he would flake on something like this? He sure wasn't at the funeral long and wouldn't show up when Dad tried to get us to his house so we could divvy up his stuff. So I don't know. He's full of so much anger. They both are. It's nothing the Lord can't handle if they'll let him. Yeah, I sure got my work cut out for me. Stop making it about you. 
It's not about you and you having to change their hearts. You can't do that. It's not your job. Your job is to share the truth with them, cover them in prayer, and sit back and let the Lord do his thing. Have faith. They'll see what your dad had in the last few months of his life, what he found in his relationship with the Lord, and how much peace that brought him, peace he never had before. It'll work out. Just believe it. How much do I owe you for the session, Doc? <laughs> this one's pro bono. But don't ask me again. I can't keep helping you like this. Well, thank you. So what are you going to do while I'm gone? I'm going to have lunch with Tina tomorrow. Hey, how are you taking her? It's a good question. Not sure. We're supposed to text. Thanks for the reminder. Two? Just a second. So what time are you leaving? As soon as I wake up. I guess we'll say goodbye tonight. Can I stay over? No, I can't do that. Right this way. Seems like every time I see him now, he's preaching to me. And we go 30 years of things being one way, now all of a sudden they're totally different. I mean, they weren't the greatest guys before, but at least they are my dad and my brother. So who are they now? Maybe you should give them a chance. Yeah, you're probably right. Give them a chance. You're sweet. Thank you. What are you going to order? I don't know yet. Just go into it with an open mind. You know what I found? If I keep an open mind, it shows me the way. You'll know who to be and what to do. How are those taquitos, good? Thanks so much, guys. This has been fun. Have a great night, OK? Um, really appreciate it. Travel safe up there. Do you know him? No. How did he know about your trip? Is he listening to us? That was really weird.
I'm gonna miss you. I wish you too. That wasn't very convincing. Have a nice weekend. You too. Good luck up there. I'm gonna need it. When you're going camping, be sure to make a checklist. If you don't, you're gonna forget something. my stuff, you know, don't. Yeah. I'll take care of it. All right. Well, I love you. Love you. And just be safe. Yeah, love you. Love you, too. You gonna be a good girl for your mom? Yes. Promise? Yes. Hmm. I love you. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. I will. I'll see you in a couple of days. Call Rob. Calling Bob. Not Bob, Rob. Calling Rob. 
Yo! Hey, you're there. Yeah. You on your way? Oh, yeah. Dude, that's the thing. I don't think I'll be able to make it there in time. I just don't. Listen, nothing. hey, nothing's more important than this. this is for I know. Dad, right? I really want to be there. But just a lot of things have been coming up for me. Rob, I swear, if you don't make it, I will never speak to you again. I'll never give you another dollar, and I will not listen to your BS stories anymore. You got me? Dude, I don't know what you're so upset about. Hey, don't dude me, number one. Number two, this is Dad's dying wish, so you better be there. You got it? Yeah, yeah fine. I'll see you there. Yeah. Call Robbie. Hey, this is Rob. I love the chap. The way to come from the southwest. You know how it goes. Later. But uh, the phones don't work up there, and I just wanted to make sure you knew where to go. So uh, we're going to be at the Minaret Campground, site number seven. Uh, you don't need anything. Dylan said he's got a tent set up for you. All you'll need is your sleeping bag and uh, whatever stuff uh, you need personally. But I uh, hope, really hope you make it up there, buddy. Drive safely, and I uh, hope to see you up there. Take care. See ya. Bye. Just want to talk.
are you doing? Good, how are you? Nice bear. He was uh, taken in 1960 up South Lake, about 25 minutes from here. Wow. Can I help you with something in particular? Yeah, I need some flies. Your tire? <laughs> no. Why don't we step back to the flies that are already made? Sounds good. You gonna be fishing lakes or streams? Streams. Hey buddy, uh, I'm on my way, got out a little late. Uh, I'm about an hour to Lone Pine, so I'm thinking probably three or four. Four? When did noon turn into four? Sorry man, I told you, traffic was nuts in LA. I got out a little late. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, well you just drive safe, and I'm headed up the hill right now, so I'm gonna lose cell reception, all right? I'll see you when I get up there. All right, see you up there, late. Rob, what's going on, man? You need a jump? No, I'm gonna need a lot more than a jump. Thanks, though. Yeah, no worries, man. What's what's going on? Do you lift? Do you need me to drop you off somewhere? I'm going pretty far away. So, where are you going? Mountains. The mountains? Where are you off to? It's crazy. He's going to the mountains, too. He's going to Mammoth. Mammoth? No way. <laughs> Seriously, you're going to Mammoth? Really? Yeah. What are the chances of that big, right? He's going, man, we're going we to Red's Meadow. Like 10 minutes away. We're going to Red's Meadow, man. Hop on in, we'll give you a ride. Mammoth? Really? Seriously, hop on in.
going camping, the sight is very important. Don't take the first one. Check them out. How far is it from the river? Can you hear the river? What about the restrooms? Are they nearby? Firewood, you gotta think about that. You have to have fires. What about the neighbors? Do they have a dog? Do they have a baby? A baby can ruin your trip. Look, the campsite can make the difference between a so-so trip and a great trip. After you find the right site, get set up, get organized. Then you can relax and enjoy yourself. How you doing? You must be the campsite host. That's me. Welcome to my paradise. Dylan, what's the last name? I'm McKay. M-C-K-A-Y? Yeah. Okay, great. Where are you from? Ventura County. Ventura County, whereabouts? Thousand Oaks. Thousand Oaks, no kidding. Ooh. Got a sister-in-law in Camarillo. Ah, uh, the outlet mall. The outlet mall. If you need anything, I'm at the uh, last trailer on the left-hand side right. as, you're, as you're coming in, and uh, bathrooms on the right-hand side. Make sure you use the bear cabinet with all your food. If you don't, you'll have some uninvited guests. Right. You don't want that. How many nights are you staying? Uh, two. Two? 22 bucks. Mm -hmm. You do new fishing while you're up? Yeah, we do supply fishing. Really? You got a good spots? Got a great spot for you. What do you got? We go up the uh, creek about 150 yards, it breaks off into a Y, take the right-hand side. What happens if I go left? You'll just be sitting in the water. There's nothing there. Okay. All awesome. the fish are on the right. All right. Enjoy yourself. Sounds good. Oh, can I do that? Yeah, this is yours. Oh, there you go. After I got us set up, I had to find what we came up here to do. I had to find the place to spread the ashes of my dead father. Once I found the spot, it was very clear. This is the end of the trail. I see you to show up. Hey, you know I wouldn't miss it. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good. How are you, man? How's Good. your drive? Good. How's yours? Uh, not bad. A little traffic you had to L.A., but still didn't expect it. It happens. So, uh, you talked to Rob? Yeah, I talked to him around noon when I woke him up. And, well, I think he'll be here. Want to bet? Have a little faith. 
you say so. I'm real with faith. Okay. Hey, look what I brought. Where'd you get that? One of the boxes from Dad's house. What do you think? How do you like it? Looks like it fits like a dream. It does. It fits perfect. Do I look like him? Yeah. What are you doing over there? What's it look like I'm doing? Struggling. Mm, very good observation, Mike. You need some help? You need me to step over there and show you how to swing? Evidently. <laughs> All right. Oh, I got it. So when I was in high school, Jim, he was my youth pastor. Man, he had a way of really getting us into the Bible. He used to play this game with us all the time. It's called Bible Crapshoot. Close your eyes, open up the Bible. Any verse, any page you pointed to, it just, it had relevance. Anytime we had a problem, anytime we went to him, went to him for advice or anything, it was the only response was to roll the dice. That was all we needed, that was enough. When you're going fishing, it's like a battle. Being prepared is essential. You can't land a lunker if you forgot your net. You can't pull the hook if you don't have your needle nose. Seeing Dylan up here immediately takes me back. It's like we're eight years old again. I can hear the old man telling us what to do. Grab that, move this. Hey, over here. He felt the need to tell us what to do all the way to the end. But in the end, I wish Dylan would have been listening. This one looks good. The charge stays a long time. It's good. Yeah, I don't need you to give me some stuff that that battery is that's used. But you did. Do you know what Mike could use or offhand? Yeah, or, I don't know. Could you? Oh wow! I've chosen things for each of you specifically. You're the only one that's been any use. But there's plenty left that you both could use. So split it up however you'd like. Oh, my little fours hat. <laughs> Is this a cookbook? Great to study by the way. Dylan, what the hell, man? What's the matter with you? You need to grow up. You or what's wrong with me? Give me that book. Thanks, Pop. Damn. He doesn't know what he needs. When the campsite host spot failed us, we decided to try some of the old trusty holes. But after getting skunked at every hole we'd ever had success at, we decided to head back to the site. You have to know when to be stubborn and stay out there, and you have to know when to call it a night. You know, if, if you're bored, there should be a Bible back there somewhere. Why don't you give it a shot? All right, might as well try out this Bible crap shoot. Oh, 
All scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. <sighs> what a lot of bull. Still, that's a pretty strange coincidence. You know, Rob, it's, it's gonna be real late by the time we get in. Why don't you just stay with us for the night and you can meet up with your brothers tomorrow. So hey, you want your burger cooked? Well done for me, buddy. You know I like mine basically burnt to a crisp. Mm. So I found the spot. Huh? Dad's spot. Cool. Where? Right up the river. Thinking a lot about him, Mike. Just like what he's been up to. Yeah. So what's up with you and Ava? Oh, we're good. Everybody's good. Thanks. What about you, Becca? Work. Becca's good. Work sucks, but Becca's good. <laughs> yeah, she's, work always sucks. She's funny. I like her a lot, you know? Yeah, I hope so. I think I'm gonna ask her to marry me. Oh, yeah? That's cool. Yeah, didn't you didn't you get a ring or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Let me see. Check that out. Cool. Must have cost a pretty penny. Guess what the best part is? What's that? This one I got it from. Who? Richard Eaton. Eaton? Eat yeah. dog from high school. Yeah, the eat dog. What's that guy doing, man? Slanging that guy could put him away. <laughs> He's slinging carrots, man. Oh, man. Slinging carrots. The three C's, huh? He's selling ya? He is. That guy, he used to drive dad nuts. Oh, man, he used to wear dad out. Right there, reading Rainbow. Let me see. We get up early. Hold on, hold on. Wish I would have known I was coming up to Jesus Camp. Hold on a second, D. You're really starting to annoy me with all this Bible stuff. I'm sure not trying to annoy you, D. Well, you are. I guess I'm just having a hard time getting my whole head around someone with so many demons could just all of a sudden wake up one morning and be a totally different person. Yeah, it's called the Holy Spirit. As soon as it's upon you, you're never the same. Your life has changed forever. Whole bunch of baggage, my friend. A lot of demons. Once he finally had a relationship with Jesus, he had a peace that he could never have had before. 
You saw it with your own eyes. I don't know why you doubt. He wasn't the same, you know it. I guess you're right. By the end, he couldn't even go to the bathroom by himself, but he sure did it with a smile on his face. Once he found the Lord, he had a peace that he could never have had before. See, there's signs everywhere. You just have to open your eyes and see them. If you want to live in this fantasy land, be my guest, but you're on your own. <laughs> no, I'm not. You made it. It wasn't easy, trust me. You'll get your medal when we get some more sleep. It's good seeing you too, Dylan. I got a tent set up for you over there, the blue one. Air mattress and sleeping bag, everything you need. I'm gonna knock out then. So what's the haps on the craps? He's an idiot. What? What's for food? What do we eat? There's a box of oh, powdered there's... donuts over there. Plenty of them. What was that? That's what I thought. I came a long way for some powdered donuts. Rob, leave it alone, man. Give me a break. Why don't you just have one then? Dad would be so proud. Good job. Five minutes, you're already complaining. All right, all right. Why don't you shut your mouth, you control freak burnout? Guys, 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 you know what we're up here for. What's the matter with you? Suck it. Powdered donuts? Who wants powdered donuts? So as soon as I walk into the arena, these two people that work for the team, they see me, they look at me, and they walk right up to me. In fact, they point. As soon as they get there, she says, how would you like to take the half-court shot? You guys want to do this? Hey, we're going to do it later, Rob. Well, you just got here. Just do this? Give me a break. Besides, we're going to do it at sunset. And we need to get some wood. Dean and I could use your help. Did you bring your gloves? Of course not. You guys should just go without me. Rob, we could really use your help. I could do something here. We could really use the extra hand. Come on. It's not about Dylan and I. This thing's about all of us. Dad. Come on. Why don't you guys hey. just... Why don't you just get in the car? You're being a little hard on him over there? No, I don't. This is like babysitting and not getting paid. Yeah, so what's different than the last 30 years? Nothing. That's the problem. Why well, don't you take it easy on him? Give him a break. Kid's got problems, Mike. Yeah, I know. He didn't have the same deal we did, and you gotta give him a hard time. You take care of that. Yeah, I've always taken care of him because you've always ignored him. I'm gonna get us some kindling. Over there looks like some good firewood. Make sure you get us some big chunks. And 
and also make sure you're looking for something with some sap on it. That'll help get the fire started. You got it. Nice shot. Yeah, did you like that? I did. That was nice. Nice. All right, I'm going to take this kindling back to the campsite. Why don't you pick up the rest of that wood? Rob, help him out. I'll see you guys back at the site. Sounds good. Let's hit it. If I drop any kindling, pick it up, too. Hey, let's go. This wood's not going to pick up itself. Hey, Rob, come on. I need your help. This wood isn't going to walk itself back to the campground, you know what I mean? Let's go. You think you're a big shot with brother? Guess what? You sucked his little brother. Dad sucked his dad. You and Mike have all these great, amazing stories about him. But guess what? They're all BS. Here's the truth. He abused me. He abused mom. Dad was a freak. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You better Who's talk this? to him. God. You better talk to him. That's your brother, man. Give me a break. Give me a break. You're punching your little brother. He's got issues, OK? I'm no kidding. So why are you punching him? All the time. Nothing changes. Thanksgiving. Christmas, New Year's, you name it, St. Patrick's Day, any holiday out there, he always screws it up. Oh yeah, just give him a break. Give him a break. Why did you even invite him? Because he's our brother. You have no idea what he said about our dad. That's it, go walk away. Go take care of him, go make him lunch. Having Rob over 10 years younger than both of us made it extremely difficult to relate to each other. Rob and I always got along okay, but Dylan and Rob have clashed since the word go. It's no surprise that they got into it up here. But where we go from here, only the Lord knows. Keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Hey, Rob, we're about to hit the water. You want to roll with us? You sure? Ready to rock and roll? Yeah, I am. He don't want to go, though. Shocker, typical. Mm -hmm. well, let's go, you show me and then we'll get in the water. 
Alright, sounds good. I've been thinking about that dream you had. Yeah? Do you remember the last thing that Dad wrote on that whiteboard in the hospital? Yeah, 10 7 By the end, he was uh, writing it out everything. Actually, it's 2 Tim 4 7, Dad's favorite Bible verse. Well, what's it about? Well, it's written by Paul, and he's writing to his protege, Tim. And he's telling him basically to keep up the good fight. He says, I fought a good fight. I have finished the race and have kept the faith. Yeah, sounds like him. Yeah, it really reminded Dad of the end of the trail statue. Dad was a warrior up until the end, too. Yeah, just like the Indian on the horse. Seen it to the end. I need to talk to Rob. Yeah, I think you're right. We both do. I think I'm gonna take him to Dad's shoe mash spot. Oh, yeah? That's a good idea. I should roll with you guys. Uh, I think it should just be me and him. I'll be careful. This is the spot. Check this out. Sorry I hit you today. I shouldn't have done that. When you call Dad a creep, that really pissed me off. I'm really sorry you had the dad who came back from the war who was all messed up. See, Mike and I, we had a different dad. He would take us to cool places like this. Dad was really into Native American stuff. So these caves are the oldest pictographs on record from the Chumash Indians, showing when the Spaniards brought horses over to the New World. Pretty cool. I just thought you really needed to see this to understand me, Mike, and Dad a lot more and our experience up here. Tell anybody about it. It's a secret. Everything up here reminds me of you. The sounds... Lieutenant Jack McKay was born July 7th, 1955. My brothers. He was a proud father, a hard worker, an athlete, a 
but most importantly, in the end, a follower of Christ. His only goal in his last days was to help others have the peace and grace that can only come from a relationship with the Lord. He goes to his next life with excitement and anticipation. From this world, he will only miss his sons and their time together. That was really beautiful out there on the river today. Yeah, it was pretty unbelievable. Hey, D, did Dad tell you exactly where to drop off the ashes? No, he just said spread them on the river. Are you sure? Yeah. Because that's the exact spot the dead never baptized up here last year. No way. I didn't know Dad was baptized. Yeah, we were up here last year camping, he and I. We, uh, we came up here in July. You were working or something, too. You couldn't make it. But we were uh, we were fishing one day, and we were out there all day. We tried every hole we knew. We tried every fly that we had. We just couldn't catch a thing. Got skunked. One of those stinking days, you know. We're on our way back to the campsite when uh, we run into this old man. He asked us how we did, and we obviously didn't do well. And he ends up busting out these old flies. He had tied them himself, but he had swore by these things. He said that they had been working for him for over 50 years. They were uh, designed after the native flies that were up there. And he gave us a few and sent us on our way, and we ended up going to the hole that he told us about and just, just killed it. We slayed it. The old man did better than I'd ever seen him do. Yeah? How many fish did you catch? I don't know, we lost count. I'm guessing 12 to 15 each, something crazy. So that night we're at the campsite just talking when the old man that we saw, he ends up walking by us and stopping. Comes by and sits down and the old man bites him down. I was like, what's, what's that doing? And Paul was in isolation. He was coming out and he realized that he had that outreach capability to make an influence on these others by expressing what he, he was saying. Too many of us remain quiet. We never have a chance to really reach out to others who may be in need. The next morning, we're out there, we're on the river, and we see that old man, he's out there in the middle of the river, and he's, uh, he's got a guy and he's dunking him. Turns out, you know, he was a pastor, I think it's some church down in Orange County. Dan goes out there and he immediately gets baptized, and as he came up, I swear to you, this. It's real, this guy came up and he was completely different. And when I saw my dad and that look in his eye, the peace that he had, I believed, I believed instantly. Because if that man can change, if that man can find peace, then anybody can. I thank God every single day that that old man was on that river because I know that he was there for a reason and it was meant to be, no question in my mind. He was supposed to be there. That's really cool. I wish I got to spend some more time with him. Only memories I have are the bad ones. I just couldn't let things go. Part of me wanted to forgive him. Just too much to get past. That's why when you talk about him like that, it's hard for me. But lately, I felt him reaching out to me like never before. It's crazy. All these things happening, I know what you guys mean. It can't be a coincidence. No way.
Hey. Morning. How you doing? Good. So I'm curious, who does your hair? I got this great guy back home. Oh, I thought he was in your tent this whole time. You know, sometimes I'll bring him up on special occasions. But he was out of town. He was with Fabio. So, yeah. Well, I want his number ASAP. Hey, no problem, man. I'll text it to you, get your email. I want to get a good hairdo going on with I yours. will get you set up, bro. I would never let you walk around like that. You are the Johnny Bravo of hair. I know. I hear you. It happens all the time. But you know what's going to happen? You're going to start getting a lot of chicks. Hey, morning. How'd you sleep? Not bad. How about you? Pretty great. So what's for breakfast? You got two choices. Yeah? What do we got? Oatmeal. And? Oatmeal. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have oatmeal then. Hey, Mike? Yeah. There's just one more thing we want to do before we left. We were wondering if you can help us out. Sure. Tell him. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the son of the one true God and invite him to be the Lord of your life? to be and what to do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the one true God and invite him to be the Lord of your life? That's the exact spot the dead never baptized up here last year. Yoga mat, huh? Yeah. What's that? It's Dad's. <laughs> Whoa. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah. It's great. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Take care of it, all right? Uh, anything else? Ready to go? Hey, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Life changing experience. I wouldn't have been the same without you. Make sure you pick up the paint set, huh? Yeah. I hope so, because you get a real gift. I'll see you back up. Right. Hey, great job up here. Good job. Got to be so happy you did an awesome job. I think so. Yeah, definitely. So don't be a stranger back home, huh? I never am. Kind of. Sometimes. Maybe bring Becca over. I will. Why don't you go see her when you get home? I got a plan for her. You don't worry about it. You got a game plan? She saw the ring from the E-Dog, right? Get it done. I got a game plan of my own. I'm about to hit the water. Well, why don't you hit the weights while you're at it? Do some <laughs> push-ups. I'll see you back home. Steve. All right.
After releasing Dad's ashes and my brothers finding the Lord, I knew that the trip was already a success. But being the competitor that I am, you know I had to get back on the river. So I tried every hole. Again, I tried every fly. But I couldn't catch a fish. So as I'm out on the river, it dawned on me. I wasn't meant to catch any fish this weekend. The Lord had made me a fisher of men. So although I didn't have any fish on the stringer, it was a great weekend on the river. Thank you, Lord. This is it, huh? The big kahuna. <laughs> Thanks for the ride. You got it. I really had fun. Thanks for inviting me out. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. Something I've been wanting to show you. What do you got? I thought you meant you. Now I know. Then him. You need to put this in a safe spot. <laughs>